Welcome to a Raise the Bar Gym Coach uh, Live. Today, we are doing our podcast. Uh, we have a repeat guest on the show today in Sean Bell. Uh, so some of you guys uh, who are fans of the podcast may remember Sean uh, is a young guy who's very, very enthusiastic um, and is planning to run around Australia, but has already done uh, some amazing things. Um, here he is. Hey, Sean. Hey, Nick. How are you going? Yeah, very well. Good to see you, mate. You too. Yeah, so uh, before you jumped in, I was just doing a very quick introduction. Uh, you're actually in the coveted uh, second uh, second time guest on the show. We haven't had too many of those. So, yeah, welcome back. Um, but for the listeners that uh, may not have heard your story with us before, could you give us a quick introduction? Yeah, sure thing. So th firstly, thanks for having me back on. Um, very stoked to, to you, mate. You're a great man. Um, and uh, yeah, so for those that didn't, I guess, listen to the last podcast I did with you guys uh, about a year ago, um, a little bit about me is I'm a very keen ultramarathon runner. Um, and I love to use my running to make a difference in the lives of others. So I've done a lot of running for charity as opposed to just running long distance for myself. And one, I think that really helps me, gives me much greater inspiration. But two, I can use something that I love and something that I'm really good at to be able to make a difference. So uh, I've run 50 marathons in 50 days, multiple 24-hour runs and uh, an ultra marathon across Bali and a few other things. So don't say that to impress you, but to impress upon you that uh, I'm a young guy out there putting my body and heart on the line to make a difference. And who have you helped? Um, who have you made a difference for? Yeah, so we raised $30,000 for the Compassionate Friends Charity, who are a charity that help grieving families. So my first campaign, which was the 50 marathons in 50 days, um, and the first 24-hour run was under the banner of Jog for Joey, which we raised money for the Compassionate Friends Charity. Um, and that, yeah, really helped them, not only with $30,000, but significant awareness to help these grieving families get that support, which was really cool. Amazing. And uh, what's planned for the future? What have you got coming up? Yes, I'm working hard at the moment towards the run around Australia for next year. Um, so 14,000 kilometre run for Make-A-Wish. So super excited about that. It's going to be an epic journey and one that I'm just training relentless, relentlessly for at the moment every single day. Um, and, yeah, just can't wait to be able to use my love for running and chase my dream of running around Australia to help other children achieve theirs as well. And have you got a goal for that run? I mean, obviously the goal is to finish it yourself, but in terms of raising funds or creating awareness, um, you know, what would you like to see uh, be achieved? Yeah, it would be amazing if we could raise $100,000. So that's uh, wow. obviously a huge goal to aim for, but uh, it's going to be a run of eight to nine months. So I think it's possible. Um, you know, people have been amazing in my feet so far for different charities. And obviously, Everyone's aligned with different charities and, and has a preference for different charities, whatever ones they believe in more so. Um, but, yeah, I think Make-A-Wish is such an incredible cause and people see that um, the hope that it gives these children and their families when they can achieve what's most meaningful to them. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to raise that. That's our goal and we'll see how we go. Awesome. Um, so at the end of the show, I'll obviously give you a bit of space uh, for all your plugs, but... Um, if someone wants to get involved now with Make-A-Wish or to make a donation or um, keep uh, stay in touch with what you're doing and how your uh, pre preparation is coming along, how, how do they go about that? Yeah, if they want to donate to Make-A-Wish, they can do that directly at Make-A-Wish's website or um, via our website as well, runforwishes.com.au. They can follow my progress to the run just on my Instagram, the Run for Wishes Instagram, um, Facebook channels as well. So... Yeah, as I said, I'm posting as much as possible. I'm training every day, working towards this big goal for next year, which we're going to start at the end of Feb next year. Awesome. Um, so you and I have spoken uh, off camera over the phone uh, last week. Um, so I was obviously filling you in that since uh, you are on the podcast last time, um, we've changed the, the dynamic a little bit. Obviously now we're doing it on Instagram Live. Um, this podcast will be available uh, through all our normal channels, iTunes, Spotify, um, <clears throat> once we've uploaded it there as well, but um, we're diving more into uh, the business side of things with a lot of our guests. 
Um, so I know you've got so much going on, but you've also just launched uh, a new app slash business. So can you give us a bit of an overview about that? And my first question there is how are you finding the time to do anything? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a good question, to be honest. Um, look, uh, I'm stoked to be able to have just released my new app. So it's called First 42K. Um, and I've got my little shirt on here for you to see. But um, nice. this this is, uh, yeah, a real passion of mine. And this is really, this business has come about on the back of the running the 50 marathons that I mentioned briefly. Uh, because in 2019, I had a lot of people run with me and I actually didn't have a day by myself, which is incredible because so many people gave up their time to run with me um, and achieved personal bests. And, and some people ran their first marathon. And it was those that ran their first marathon just gave me so much fulfillment and happiness. And I think it was a journey of seeing them um, step by step with me and sometimes the grimace on their face, sometimes a smile on their face, but ultimately giving them that hug at the end and sharing that emotion is what stuck with me. And it just left me hungry to develop something in the future that would be able to give people this opportunity. So it's something that I, I remember and hold on to, but I didn't know how I was going to um, I guess, deliver this experience or help people along the way to run a marathon. And then when COVID happened last year, it presented an opportunity where my run around Australia was pushed back to 2022 just simply because we couldn't get the trial runs and all the things that we needed to do um, in prep for next year. We, we couldn't make them happen. So therefore, I had a lot more time on my hands last year and um, I went to my coach and said, I really want to build this in collaboration with you because people always ask me, I'd love to run like you. Can um, your coach, he or she coach me as well? But the way that he's structured, he likes to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with his coach, with his clients. And so therefore it wasn't possible to be able to do that. And then I came up with the idea of first 42 K being something that I could be the face of and be all the communication talking to the members. But Jace is the science behind it, the strength training, the running, um, and Kate, my yoga teacher, handles the yoga, mobility, that side of things in the program, and Chloe, my sports dietitian, all the nutrition for how to prepare for a marathon. So it's a holistic approach that will help you run your marathon, and I'm just grateful to have such a great team around me as well. Okay, so are, are your members of your team uh, investors as well? Like, are they, have they come on board as partners? Uh, Jace has my coach, so okay. um, there's two of them. There, there's Jace and DJ. Jace is really my main coach, but DJ is uh, he, he's a full time lawyer, but he's also a running coach as well. So they're involved in the business. Their their business, B and B Athletic, um, have helped me prepare with my running. The two of them, those guys have have really. The reason I went to them as well is is I wouldn't be the runner that I am without them. Um, you know, my journey started with them in 2018 and all the feats that I've done since then that I, I've spoke about briefly before, that was on the back of their coaching. So I knew that they were the obvious one for me to be able to help other people run their marathons. So they are involved in the business as partners. Um, the other guys were, we just had their support, basically contractors of the business in, you know, for their, for their nutrition videos or yoga videos. Um, but they are still heavily interested and um, jump on live videos and stuff like that from time to time as well. Yeah. Okay. Great. So you sounds like you've got a real um, high caliber of experts that you can kind of lean on and uh, get support from, uh, especially um, you know as you probably. I don't, I'm not sure if you've done app development before, but I guess you're trying to figure out, out a whole lot of things at the one time. And um, yeah, it'd be great to work together as a team. I'd imagine. Mate, it is. <laughs> I think it's good. We've all got our own little um, you know areas of expertise, and um, I think. A lot of these people probably don't know, but I'm a serious tech nuffy. So to have yeah. some support from some of those guys uh, is really helpful. Um, it just allows me to be able to communicate with the members and do um, all of those sorts of things. I think be that point of contact and help people, hold them accountable. We have weekly Zoom calls so our members can ask us any questions that they're struggling with with the program and that way I'm able to support them. So that's really my focus, my involvement with the program, that sort of community and, and member support as well as marketing, um, you know, producing videos that support our program. And then other than that, as I said, I've got the coaches, the experts involved um, in the background as well. Yeah, fantastic. So um, as a member um, or as a, cl <clears throat> a client of 
uh, your product, what, what's the member journey look like? So do I just download an app and am I, am I on my own? Like do I move into a, a, a collective group of people? Like how do, what does it look and feel like? Yeah, so it's, well, it's got a very appy feel, and, uh, yeah. but it's actually just done, it's just a website. So um, many people say it's an app, and that's because it, it definitely feels like an app. It's got all the features of an app, um, but it's, it's all done through WordPress. So it's all on a website, first42k.com.au. Um, that way you can follow it, and basically it gives you a program of different things to do every single day, and, and it's all different. Um, I think before I started to get coaching, I didn't realize that running a marathon isn't just going and running. And, and I used to run every single day as hard as I could and wonder why, my, wonder why my body was so sore all the time and locked up and my hip flexors were in just enormous pain. So until I got the experts, Jace, and then that's why he's come on board and built this in the way he has, um, until I started to be coached like that, that's when my running started to really change and improve my performance. And so this holistic approach to people is that They've got stuff to do every single day within the program, but it varies. So it might be a, a fast run, like an interval session at, at an ATH track, and then the next day is a gym session. So as you know, being a strength coach, the importance of that strength training to be able to supplement your running because you know we need to be able to support our, our muscles and, and get them nice and strong. Yeah, so I guess from a, from a member experience point of view, um, they have different things every single day and the best way that we can support them through that is with weekly calls. I'm constantly messaging them and checking how they're going, um, just following their runs on Strava and, and all of that as well. So, um, yeah, that holistic approach that they follow with varying intensities. So it might be strength training a couple of days a week, a couple of yoga sessions in there per week, um, and then they have their long run on the weekend and a recovery run as well. So, um, yeah, the feedback so far has been really great and, and grateful for that. We actually had two runners on the weekend complete their first 42K after using our program for the past 13 weeks. So oh, wow. um, they ran a marathon at, at the Great Ocean Road, um, which was really awesome to see. And one of our uh, other beta testers, Tatum, jumped in and she did her first, or not her first, sorry, but uh, her PB half marathon and took 30 minutes off her previous oh, wow. time, which is epic. So, yeah, massive yeah, awesome. achievement. So when you say one-on-one -on -one calls, um, is that oh, – sorry, uh, weekly calls, is that one-on-one -on -one or in a group environment? No, a group, group setting, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, every, every Tuesday, 7 p.m., all the runners jump on and, and then they can ask us any questions. Uh, if they have any questions through the week that I can get back to them straight away, they can send them through to me. At any time, we've got a private Facebook group. They can ask us, you know, and get that support. Um, but yeah, we, we address all their questions basically at the one time in the in the group call once a week, Tuesday, seven pm, um, and then that way we can support them through that. So as I said, they can they can ask us preloaded questions, so we're aware of them, and then we can just answer them on the call, but also questions in live time as well. Oh, amazing! So have you already started to build a sense of community, like uh, members? teaming up and going for runs together and or doing some training or yoga together or is that started to uh, come together at all or not, not yeah sure. i don't i don't know about uh getting together for yoga and stuff like that i mean the way that we've set it up is this they can as I said it feels like an app but it's on your phone um they can just watch the video okay cool i've got this yoga video today is our yoga teacher filmed heaps of different ones that they can get involved with um, so a lot of it they can do at their own convenience. And I think the great part about what we've built with First 42K is it's in your pocket and you can use it anywhere on your world, anywhere in the world. So, um, you know, if you are going for your holiday, it's still important to train and stay healthy on your holiday. So, um, you know, you can, you can follow that there. And so in terms of physical community, it would be great to have an event, say, in Melbourne. But I know that some of our testers are actually – you know, early, some of our beta testers in the early stage, we had people, um, some of our mates in America and Bali. So it's actually already, um, with, you know, talking to people on a global scale. Um, but, yeah, it would be cool to do something down the track with, with having a big community get together as well. Yeah, amazing. Um, so have you moved on from just beta testers? Um, like are you gaining momentum and getting members now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we had beta testers in from... I think it was about the start of the year, start of Jan. So as I said, 13 weeks, these guys use the program and some of them have been great. They, obviously, they're, um, 
you know, show, showcasing on the weekend, them achieving the marathon was, was fantastic to be able to prove that this marathon program really does work. And I think the best testimonial we got was from Pete, and he said that uh, Pete's actually 60, and he ran his first marathon, which is unbelievable. Um, but he said on the Monday he went for a run again, just a slow recovery run because his body just pulled up so well, uh, which was so yeah, great. Wow. To- so great to see that and it's a testament to how hard he trained but also to, to show that the program is structured in that way that allows your body to adapt um, you know it's a conservative approach I think it's worth sharing that when I went to my coach with this idea I said all right Jace let's let's build a business that helps people run a marathon let's call it how to run a marathon in 12 weeks and he laughed and he's like no, mate, because people shouldn't run a marathon in 12 weeks. He said, if we want someone to do that and, and limp over the finish line, yeah, they might do that and it's fast, but they're not going to enjoy the journey. So we've built it in a way that we can get you to your first marathon no matter where you're at. So if you've never run before um, and you're simply getting off the couch, it will take you a year to get to a marathon if you're starting from zero. If you can run 5K, it'll take you nine months. If you can comfortably run 10K, but that's your max, six months. And if you can run 21K, a half marathon, then it will take you three months. So that's really how we've built this so that no matter where you're starting from, we'll get you there. We've got that, as I said, accountability to really help you out and you just follow the program. And I think, you know, being, um, I guess, sharing my own journey, that's been the best part of it for me is we get so lost in, in what exercise should I do today because we just don't know. And if we can leave it to the experts, which, you know, Jace, as I said, has helped me do the things that I've achieved. And that's why we've got him to help these guys run their first marathon. Yes, yeah, some of the sessions might be challenging, but they can just stick to that, put in the work, and then they'll reap the result. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like a fantastic program, but one that might be a little bit tricky from a marketing perspective because no one wants to hear it's going to take me a year to achieve those results when – you know, as you and I both know that like any meaningful change doesn't often happen in 12 weeks. It's a much longer process, but it's good that you're sitting a little bit outside of the fitness industry. You know, people aren't coming to you to lose weight or to tone up. They're coming to you to achieve a a specific goal, but it's still within that fitness industry realm. So, um, you know, when we're competing against people like other businesses that say they can get results in four weeks or six weeks or 12 weeks, it it becomes pretty challenging. So, um, yeah, now that you've built this thing, what is your marketing strategy? I mean, I would be shocked if it was just one thing, but are you able to give us a, an idea of like um, the overall strategies that you're using? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, this probably isn't, yeah, as such my expertise, but I'm talking to experts in this area to, to work that out. Um, I think just trying to share and be as authentic as possible with, with the results that's happening, as we said, Um, Those beta testers that put in the work early have got that. Um, We're just trying to post regularly to show both overviews of the program um, as well as that client success stories as well so that people get the understanding of everything involved um, as well as seeing people actually achieve that result. So um, we're getting out on social media as much as possible. I'm talking to people now about trying to learn how to do everything involved with Facebook ads and, and all of that. So it's been a great learning experience for me. Um, but the members that we've got, ha- we've had on so far have just, you know, really loved the opportunity and it's been great to, to be able to support them on their journey. How good was your compliance rate with the beta testers? Yeah, we probably had uh, about two-thirds of them really stick properly to the program, which, you know, we're, we're pretty happy with, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, so often people sign up for something um, and as a beta tester, you know, you're getting that access to the program, but in return for doing the program, giving us that feedback. Um, But as we know, you know, sometimes people struggle to put value on something if they haven't paid for it. Um, But these guys and girls have been phenomenal. As I said, the results on the weekend really speak to that. So um, we're just grateful that they've put in the work and, you know, we didn't choose beta testers based on the fact that, like, none of our beta testers are influencers. None of them have large social media followings or anything like that. That was never um, the focus. We just want people who are really passionate about running a marathon, and, and we found those people, and that's why they actually stuck to the program. We had that um, success, and, and then they got the results. So we couldn't be happier with that, um, and now it's, yeah, it's about putting this 
out into the world and um, yeah, just slowly getting more and more people involved in the program and, and feeling that, that uh, yeah, that incredible feeling that comes with running a marathon. Awesome. Um, it sounds like the people that you have found so far are really bought in. That's great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's, and some of them are in Melbourne. So of those ones that are, I've, I haven't met up with um, them just yet, but we've been in talks to try and arrange a run. So, um, you know, it's great that I'll be able to do that side of things as well with the ones that are local to be able to, um, you know, support them in a different way because we can provide a running program, but I really, you know, know how to help people with their technique. Um, that's something that I actually um, used to have terrible technique and very surprising to a lot of people is when I achieved those 50 marathons, I actually was really overstriding and um, as a result, putting a lot of impact through my ankle, knee and hip joint, hip flexors were getting smashed. So it's quite remarkable that I was able to do that with a poor running technique and I've spent a lot of time to correct that and now I'm at the level of run coaching where I can help other people with that. So it's a good little thing, little value add that we can give to um, clients within and members within Melbourne um, that they can just run with me and I can help them where I can as well. Yeah, awesome. Um, so you and I definitely both know that a good pro program is a flexible program um, because often mood, energy levels, all of those things can have an impact on how well we can execute what's written in front of us. So how rigid is your program and is there that, that scalability for people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, like ideally they follow that <laughs> as best they can to a T, but as I've said, you know, being coached in this way, there's no way over the past – um, three, four years that I've been coached by Jace that I've actually stuck to it 100% every single day. Um, if we can stick to that the majority of the time, we're going to reap the result. We're going to get that. Um, but we do also need to understand and listen to our body. So we're always encouraging our members to do the right thing by their body. And if, if their body is calling for a rest or to scale back the intensity on that day, then do that. And I think it's an interesting point that you brought that up. And, and it's because... It's interesting because, like you said at the start, I don't know how you're finding the time for everything. Um, so as we mentioned briefly that I'm running around Australia starting Feb next year and um, working as a running coach, working as a speaker in schools. Uh, I've started first 42K and I'm planning this run around Australia. So I'm meeting with sponsors and, and um, you know, planning all the logistics for that. So there's a lot going on. Um, and last month I was uh, just really finding it hard to fit it all in and I've had to... I've now been able to sort of scale a few things back to be able to really put the focus into this and to next year's run and, and most importantly, my training to really um, make sure that I'm doing the best I can. Um, but about a month ago, I was really struggling to get it all in and, and I just thought as long as I can do the strength training, that's really most important and, and that's um, surprising to a lot of runners, but I'm always telling them how important that strength training is from an injury prevention point of view and also performance uh, I think when I was pushed for time, I would actually get more value out of strength training than my running sessions. So now I've been able to fix that up. Obviously, I'm training every day. I'm working towards this big dream next year. Um, but in that time where things were just so nuts for me, strength training really took precedence. So if members are feeling, you know, like pressed for time or, as you said, down on energy, not performing at their best, then there's definitely flexibility in the program. Yeah, great. What does, like, just as a quick overall template, what does your strength program look like? Like, how many days are you squatting, hinging, pressing, um, or, you know, are you spending more time doing unilateral and accessory work? Like, what, what's going on there? Yeah, yeah. So most of it is uh, unilateral work. Um, obviously, when we're running, we don't have two feet on the ground. So while we do want to develop the strength through our muscles um, to be able to support us through big lifts like squats, hip thrusts, deadlifts, we can also get that power and strength through single leg work. So um, in the program, there's a lot in terms of Bulgarian split squats, uh, single leg deadlifts, lunges, all of those sorts of exercises to really support you as well as that core strengthening because if we're stronger through our core, we're going to hold our posture a lot better when we're running. We're not going to be folding forward and hinging at the hips. We don't want to have that or that folding forward at the body or we're going to potentially put a lot of stress through our low back and also our upper back and traps and all of that. So holding form in running is really important and that's why we have a lot of core work involved in the programs as well. Yeah, amazing. So through all the skills that you've learned to be able to do uh, the 50 marathons in 50 days, running around Australia, 
raising an incredible amount of money um, and your coaching of people. What top skills do you think have been the most transferable now that you're entering and trying to develop a business? Probably just communication. It's something that um, has developed from a number of things, not just um, obviously, yeah, obviously the, the running journey has, has been a big part of that in talking to coaches regularly and all of that. So then I can help other people from that communication point of view. Um, but I think communication is something that I've always had a passion in, in terms of developing and uh, I'm constantly doing speaking courses and was involved just even, even in high school as a, um, you know, house captain and all of that to really build that. I think um, it's often overlooked, but communication really is that number one skill set on the planet. If you know how to talk properly and to be able to, then you can have that influence on someone and you can really help them um, where you may not have been able to. So um, communication is probably the biggest one. Um, in terms of other skills that have come from my journey so far, yeah, I think just understanding of the, the whole uh, holistic approach to running. So if I can share that with other people, then that's probably the main thing that we want to get across that, you know, I've lived this. I was that runner that would just run to uni three days a week. Uni was a half marathon distance from my house and run as hard as I could because I'd leave as little time as possible from trying to sleep in that as much as possible to then get to class bang on time. So never doing that proper warm up, not stretching, going as hard as I can. And I've had the pain that's come from that. So then having that to then getting a coach and seeing obviously the success which everyone sees on the outside, but also just not having that pain um, is incredible. And I think that's that comes down to that holistic approach to how we train and prepare for whether it's to run your first marathon or to run around Australia. Can I make a, an observation as well? Yeah. Yeah, I think um, you're a guy who can become really passionate about things as well. So I think the passion that you have for, um, you know, those causes that you've raised money for and um, been involved with, I think – you're obviously passionate about running and you're obviously passionate about helping people. So I think that'll really go a long way into developing this new business uh, for you because people are attracted to that passion. You know, when, when you mentioned authenticity before, um, that's something that people just want to get involved in. So I've no doubt um, it'll really take off uh, for you. Um, last question before we go into the wrap-up questions. Um, what has surprised you about getting started in this business? Like what's something behind the scenes that um, has popped up that you may not have ever expected? Look, to be honest, everything has sort of gone as, as planned for me. I think um, this is obviously a new venture. So I was just throwing everything at it, as you said, with that passion, but probably not quite understanding everything involved and just learning as we go. So I think as long as we stick to our main skill sets, and as we said, we've clearly described uh, and defined our roles within the business. And I'm grateful to have such a team around me. Um, but if I can focus on those strengths and, and really deliver on that, then, you know, our members know that they can get that from me. They can get that coaching and science backed programming from my coach, uh, everything like that as well. So uh, there's nothing that really stands out to me there. I think that's great advice though. I think if you are going to enter into a joint venture or a partnership, really understanding whose roles are what, um, can really, you know, save a lot of trouble down the track, that's for sure. And, yeah, understanding what your strengths and weaknesses are and then obviously executing uh, appropriate to those. I've got two questions to finish uh, off interviews now, Sean. So I wish I could remember what you said last time, but um, I, we would have asked you this one. If you had one message that you could share with the world and, and slap on a billboard, what would that be? Yeah, it would be the same message as last year on the podcast. So let's chase your dreams now. We're not promised tomorrow. And... Unfortunately, the tragedy of losing my friend and football teammate at 18 years old, um, you know, while I wish he was still here, that had a profound impact on my life and it's helped me, helped shape me into the person that I am today um, and it's given me that passion for life to know that we have to go after our dreams because life is precious um, and we are not promised tomorrow. So if, if there's one message for the world, that's, that's it for me in a nutshell and I hope that as many people take that on as possible. You know, sometimes it can be a slow journey, it can be a hard journey, but if you can go after what you love, you're going to be more fulfilled and that's what life's about at the end of the day, being happy. So uh, that's the number one message for me. Amazing. Final question, what are you holding gratitude for today? Uh, firstly, having this chat, mate, I appreciate you taking the time and, um, you know, it's a, it's a great thing to be able to jump back on for a second time with you. So um, that's, that's a great one. 
Um, other than that, I think there's just, yeah, so many things to be grateful for at the moment with me. It's, um, you know, this was a journey that I have been very excited about first 42K, but it's nothing that uh, I saw happening before the run around Australia. As I said, I was holding on to those feelings of how special it is to help people run their first marathon. Um, but I always saw it as post run around Australia because the run was going to be 2021 and there was just no way we were going to be able to have that happen. So I'm grateful that while life's busy, I'm passionate about what I do. Um, and it's a, it's a special thing to be able to help people experience their first marathon. And uh, if you just look at my last post, I think I put it up last night um, of, of our, as I said, beta testers running their first marathon and half marathon, seeing their big smiles. That's what it's all about. So just grateful for many things, the journey that I'm on, and, and as I said, for having this chat as well today. Yeah, amazing. Uh, thanks for sharing. Oh, so I've taken over the, uh, the running program at the footy club, um, uh, taken over your job. Um, we're not doing too much being in season, but, um, yeah, the boys are, are – I'm definitely not overlapping people uh, as um, they're progressing, so um, just thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> so it's been good fun. But no, um, good, yeah, good to share because, yeah, not everyone would, would have known that. So, yeah, for the last two pre-seasons in particular, uh, I was a fitness coach for the Hawthorne Amateur Footy Club, which is where Nick plays, and uh, it was great to be involved. And it just coincided that the start of the season was right when I launched – April 11, we launched first 42K. So – um, yeah, my work with the club was involved at pre-season and it's just great to see you boys 5-1 and one and banking some serious wins and, uh, and obviously you're incredibly fit. So, um, you know, that's a testament to the work that you've all put in. Thanks, mate. Um, all right, plug everything for us. Where can we find you? How can we get involved? Uh, if we are interested in um, doing our first 42, um, yeah, where can we find you? Yeah, so first42k is the handle on social media. So that's Instagram and Facebook. Uh, if, you, if you want to get involved with that to run your first marathon. Um, other than that, if you want to follow the Run for Wishes journey, the Run Around Australia, we also have a, a Run for Wishes Facebook page and Instagram page as well. Um, and then my social media, Sean Bell, um, I sort of cover everything that I'm up to. So that's First 42K, Run for Wishes, speaking, my own training, that's sort of just everything involved there. So, um, yeah, grateful for you guys tuning in and um, look forward to connecting with many of you as well. Amazing. Um, so, yeah, to all the listeners, uh, this episode of Raise the Bar Radio is brought to you by Raise the Bar Gym Coach. So I help uh, gyms and personal trainers go from good to great, create profitability and get some time back uh, in their business. So that's what I'm all about as well. Sean, thank you uh, so much for jumping on. It's always good to, to chat to you, mate. Um, I enjoy the conversation every time. Good luck with, uh, with everything that's ahead of you. Um, like I said, your passion alone um, will make you crush it. So um, I'm always following along and uh, I'm a big fan. Thanks so much, mate. Big fan of you as well and look forward to catching up soon. All right. Thanks, mate. See ya.